Deepika Padukone, born name, Deepika Padukone. Nickname, Deepi, Deep's born date, January 5, 1986. Born place, Copenhagen, Denmark. Residence, Mumbai or Bangalore, India. Family Prakash Padukone, father. Ajayula Padukone, mother, Anisha Padukone, sister. Nationality, Indian star sign, Capricorn. Education, attended Sophia High School in Bangalore and completed her pre-university studies at Mount Carmel College, Bangalore. Deepika was enrolled in Indira Gandhi National Open University in Bachelors of Arts, Sociology. Speaks, Hindi, Marathi, English, Konkani, mix of Tamil and Malayalam and Bengali. Occupation, actress and former model. Religion, Hinduism blood type. Build, slim sexuality, straight. Distinctive features, height, 175 cm. Weight, 60 kg, 132 pounds, hair color, black. Eye color, black measurements. 34-2436-87-61-91.5 cm Dress size, 6, US, bra size, 32B Shoe size, 9, US, race ethnicity, Indian Deepika Padukone, pronounced Deepkapko or Peko, born January 5, 1986, is an Indian film actress and producer the highest paid actress in India, her accolades include three Filmfare Awards. She features in listings of the nation's most popular personalities, and Time named her one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2018. Padukone, the daughter of the badminton player Prakash Padukone, was born in Copenhagen and raised in Bangalore. As a teenager, she played badminton in national level championships but left her career in the sport to become a fashion model. She soon received offers for film roles and made her acting debut in 2006 as the title character of the Kannada film Ashvarya. Padukone then played a dual role opposite Shahrukh Khan in her first Bollywood release, The Romance O.M. Shanti O.M., 2007, which won her the Film Fair Award for Best Female Debut. Padukone received praise for her starring role in the romance Love AAJKAL, 2009, but this was followed by a brief setback. The romantic comedy Cocktail, 2012, marked a turning point in her career. And she gained further success with starring roles in the romantic comedies Yejawani Hai Diwani and Chennai Express, both 2013, the heist comedy Happy New Year, 2014 and Sanjay Leela Bungsali's period dramas Bajirao Mastani, 2015, and Padmavit, 2018. Padukone's acclaimed portrayal of a character based on Juliet in Bungsali's tragic romance Galeon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela, 2013, and a headstrong architect in the comedy drama Paiku, 2015, earned her two Filmfare Awards for Best Actress. Her first project in Hollywood came with the action film Triple X, Return of Xander Cage, 2017. Padukone formed her own production company Ka Entertainment in 2019. She is the chairperson of the Mumbai Academy of the Moving Image and is the founder of the Live Love Laugh Foundation, which creates awareness on mental health in India. Vocal about issues such as feminism and depression, she also participates in stage shows, has written columns for a newspaper, designed her own line of clothing for women, and is a prominent celebrity endorser for brands and products. Padukone is married to her frequent co-star Ranveer Singh. Early Life and Modeling Career Padukone was born on January 5, 1986 in Copenhagen, Denmark to Konkani-speaking parents. Her father, Prakash Padukone, is a former professional badminton player and her mother, Ajayula, 
is a travel agent. Her younger sister, Anisha, is a golfer. Her paternal grandfather, Ramesh, was a secretary of the Mysore Badminton Association. The family relocated to Bangalore, India when Padukone was a year old. She was educated at Bangalore Sophia High School and completed her pre-university education at Mount Carmel College. She subsequently enrolled at the Indira Gandhi National Open University for a Bachelor of Arts degree in Sociology but later quit it due to scheduling conflicts with her modeling career. Padukone has said that she was socially awkward as a child and did not have many friends. The focus of her life was badminton, which she played competitively from a young age. Describing her daily routine in a 2012 interview, Padukone said, I would wake up at 5 in the morning, go for physical training, go to school, again go for playing badminton, finish my homework, and go to sleep. Padukone continued to pursue a career in badminton throughout her school years and played the sport in national level championships. She also played baseball in a few state level tournaments. While concentrating on her education and sporting career, Padukone also worked as a child model, first appearing in a couple of advertising campaigns at the age of eight. In the 10th grade, she changed focus and decided to become a fashion model. She later explained, I realized that I was playing the game only because it ran in the family. So, I asked my father if I could give up the game and he wasn't upset at all. 11 in 2004, she began a full-time career as a model under the tutelage of Prasad Bhaidopa. Early in her career, Padukone gained recognition with a television commercial for the soap Liral and modeled for various other brands and products. In 2005, she made her runway debut at the Lakme Fashion Week for designer Sunit Varma and won the Model of the Year Award at the Kingfisher Fashion Awards. Padukone's fame increased when she appeared in a highly popular print campaign for the 2006 Kingfisher calendar. The designer Wendell Rodericks commented, Since Ashvaryurai, we haven't had a girl as beautiful and fresh. Rodericks had spotted her at a Ganjam jewelry class he was teaching and signed her up with the Matrix Agency. At the age of 21, Padukone relocated to Mumbai and stayed at her aunt's home. That year, she gained wider recognition by featuring in the music video for Haimish Reshmamiya's song Nam Hai Tara. Padukone soon began to receive offers for film roles. Believing herself to be too inexperienced as an actor, she instead enrolled for a course at Anupam Kerr's Film Academy. Following much media speculation, the director Farah Khan, who had noticed her in Reshmamiya's music video, made the decision to cast her for a role in Happy New Year. Fashion designer Wendell Rodericks also takes credit in helping her get the role. Farah Khan was looking for a model to star in her next film, and got in touch with Malika Arora. Rodericks, for whom Padukone had been modeling for roughly two years then, recommended her to Aurora, a close friend of his, who in turn recommended her to Khan in 2007. Acting career film debut and breakthrough, 2006-2009 Padukone announced in 2006 that she would make her film debut with Ashvarya, a Kannada film directed by Indrajit Lankesh. The romantic comedy was a remake of the Telugu film Manmadudu, and she was cast in the title role opposite the actor Upendra. The film proved to be a major commercial success. R.G. Vijayasarthi of Rediff.com was appreciative of Padukone's screen presence but added that she needs to work on her emotional scenes. By the end of 2006, Farah Khan's Happy New Year was shelved, and Khan had instead cast Padukone for the reincarnation melodrama OM Shanti OM, 2007. Set against the backdrop of the Hindi film industry. The film tells the story of a struggling actor in the 1970s who dies soon after witnessing the murder of the woman he loved and is reincarnated to avenge her death. Shah Rukh Khan starred as the protagonist, and Padukone featured in dual roles Shantipraya, a leading actress of the 1970s, and later as Sandy, 
an aspiring actress. She said, I've grown up watching Shah Rukh and always admired him so much. To get to work with him is quite wonderful. It was also fantastic that Farah showed faith in my talent and cast me opposite him. In preparation for her role. Patakone watched several films of actresses Helen and Hemamalini to study their body language, which she felt were more graceful and completely different from today's actors. However, her voice was dubbed by the voice artist Mona Goshetti. For one of the songs in the film, Dhumtana, Padukone drew upon Indian classical dance, and according to Dorling Kindersley, mesmeres ed audiences by using Astama draws, hand gestures. OM Shanti OM was a commercial success, and emerged as the highest grossing film of the year, with a global revenue of 1.49 billion Indian rupees, 22 million US dollars. Tarun Adarsh of the entertainment portal Bollywood Hungama reviewed, Deepika has all it takes to be a top star the personality, the looks, and yes, she's supremely talented too. Standing in the same frame as Shah Rukh and getting it right is no small achievement. She comes as a whiff of fresh air. At the annual Film Fair Awards ceremony, Padukone was awarded the Best Female Debut Award and received her first nomination in the Best Actress category. Bollywood Hungama reported that the success of OM Shanti OM proved a breakthrough for Padukone. She followed this success with the role of Gayatri, one of star Ranbir Kapoor's love interests. A feisty student in Australia who moonlights as a cab driver in Yashraj Films' romantic comedy Bakna A.E. Hasino, 2008. The film was a financial success, but Namrata Joshi of Outlook wrote that Padukone's performance was disappointing, she is mannequin-like and utterly lacks fire and zing. Padukone's first release of 2009 came alongside Akshay Kumar in the Nikhil Advani-directed kung fu comedy Chandani Chowk to China, in which she portrayed the dual roles of Indian-Chinese twin sisters Siki and Suzy. Produced by Warner Brothers, it had one of the widest international releases ever given to an Indian film. Padukone learned the Japanese martial art form of jiu-jitsu and performed her own stunts. Despite the hype, Chandani Chowk to China was a financial failure with worldwide earnings of 554.7 million Indian rupees, 8.0 million US dollars, on a budget of 800 million Indian rupees, 12 million US dollars. Film critics were generally disappointed with the picture and Padukone's performance. Justin Trout of Orlando Weekly noted, She is so wasted in Chandani Chowk, my mind often wandered back to OM Shanti OM during her scenes, possibly as a defense mechanism. That same year, Padukone featured in an item number, for a song called Love Mary Hit Hit, in the drama Below following which she appeared alongside Saif Ali Khan in the romantic drama Love AAJKAL from the writer-director Imtiaz Ali. The film documented the changing value of relationships among the youth and had Padukone play the part of Mira Pundit, a headstrong career woman. With a worldwide gross of 1.2 billion Indian rupees, 17 million US dollars, Love AAJKAL proved to be the third highest grossing film of 2009. Anirudh Guha of Daily News and Analysis said that Padukone delivers the best of her four performances so far and Nikut Kashmi of the Times of India mentioned her as definitive and strong. At the 55th Film Fair Awards Padukone received a nomination for Best Actress. Career Struggles, 2010-2011 Padukone had five film releases in 2010. Her first role was in Vijay Lalvani's psychological thriller Karthik Calling Karthik, where Padukone was cast as the supportive girlfriend of a depressed man, played by Farhan Akhtar, who goes through a series of changes after receiving mysterious phone calls every morning. Derek Ellie of Variety found the film to be thinly plotted but added that the uncomplicated ingenuousness of Padukone helps make the tall tale convincing. Commercially, the film performed poorly. Her most economically profitable film that year was Sajith Khan's 1.15 billion Indian rupees, 
17 million US dollars, grossing comedy film Houseful in which she featured alongside an ensemble cast including Akshay Kumar. Ritesh Deshmukh, Lara Dutta, Arjun Rampal, Jia Khan, and Bomani Rani. Raja Sen described the film as a festival of bad acting and attributed Padukone as poor performance to her plasticky expressions. Pradeep Sarkar's drama Le Fanji Parinde, 2010, saw Padukone star opposite Neil Nidin Mukesh in the role of Pinky Palker, a blind girl determined to win a skating competition. In preparation for her role, she observed the interactions of blind people and rehearsed scenes while blindfolded. Writing for the Hindu. Suvish Kamath was particularly impressed by Padukona and wrote that she exercises considerable restraint in playing her part. Later that year, Hindustan Times published that the film helped change people's perception of Padukona, with focus directed on her acting prowess rather than her appearance. Her next role was opposite Imran Khan in the Danish Aslam directed romantic comedy Break Kabad. CNNIBN's Rajiv Mazan found the film to be reasonably engaging and noted that it was watchable largely for the performance of its leading lady. Both Leifanji Perinde and Break Kabad underperformed at the box office. Padukone's final release of 2010 was Ashidosh Gaurikar's period film Kilian Humzi John Say opposite Abhishek Bachchan. Based on the book Do and Die by Manini Chaturji, the film is a retelling of the 1930 Chittagong Armory Raid. Bachchan featured as the revolutionary leader Surya Sen and Padukone played Kalpana Dutta, his confidant. Padukone said that she did not research for the role as there were hardly any reference points as to what Kalpana looked like other than a few photos. And relied completely on Gaurikar's direction. A review published in The Telegraph was appreciative of Padukone's portrayal, and the film received a generally positive critical reception. Despite this, it was a major commercial disappointment. Padukone began 2011 with an item number in Rohan Sippi's Dum Maro Dum. The song was a remixed version of the iconic song Dum Maro Dum, from the 1971 film Hare Rama Hare Krishna, which featured Zenit Aman. Padukone referred to it as the wildest song any actress has done, the song's suggestive lyrics and raunchy moves attracted controversy including a court case for indecency. Her next film was Prakash Jha's socio-political drama Arakshan, co-starring Amitabh Bachchan, Saif Ali Khan, Manoj Bajpayee, and Pratek Babbar, which dealt with the political issue of caste-based reservations in India. Trade journalists had high expectations for the film which ultimately flopped at the box office. Critical reaction was largely negative. Though Pradeem D. Gupta mentioned Padukona as the most refreshing thing about the movie. Her final appearance that year was in Rohit Dhawan's comedy drama Desi Boys alongside Akshay Kumar. John Abraham and Chitrangada Singh a role that failed to propel her career forward. The series of poorly received films led critics to perceive that Padukona had lost her sparkle. Establishing with romantic comedies and Ramlila, 2012-2014. In an interview for the Indian Express, Padukona said that her starring role in the 2012 Homi Ajaniya directed romantic comedy cocktail marked a significant turning point in her career. Raja Sen of Rediff.com opined that she had successfully proved to be a stunning girl who can also act. Set in London. Cocktail tells the story of a software engineer, played by Saif Ali Khan, and his relationship with two temperamentally different women and impulsive party girl, Veronica. Played by Padukone, and a submissive girl next door, Mira, played by Diana Penty. During the script narration, the producer Dinesh Vijan offered Padukone the choice of which woman to play. She decided on Veronica to expand her horizons as an actress. Portraying the role was a creative and physical challenge for her. And to achieve the physical requirements of her character, she exercised extensively and followed a rigorous diet. Critics were divided in their opinion of the film, but particularly praised Padukone's performance. Dev Sharma of Filmfare credited her as the soul of the film and wrote that she excels in every scene, 
whether as a material girl who enjoys sex, drugs and rock and roll or as the jealousy-ridden girl out to destroy herself. Cocktail earned Padukone Best Actress nominations at several award ceremonies, including Filmfare, Screen, and IIFA. The film proved to be a box office hit as well. In 2013, Padukone established herself as a leading actress of contemporary Hindi cinema by featuring in four of the top grossing productions of the year. She collaborated with Saif Ali Khan for the fourth time, alongside John Abraham and Jacqueline Fernandez, in A Basmistan's Race 2, an ensemble action thriller that served as a sequel to Race, 2008. The film received predominantly negative reviews but with a total collection of 1.62 billion Indian rupees, 23 million US dollars, it proved to be a commercial success. In a scathing review, Sayabal Chaturji of NDTV wrote that both Padukona and Fernandez strut around like wound-up automatons that are all decked up but have nowhere to go. Ian Mukherjee's romantic comedy Yejawani Hidiwani was Padukona's next film release. Co-starring opposite Ranbir Kapoor, she was cast as Naina Tulvar, a shy wallflower, which marked a departure from the glamorous characters that she had a reputation for portraying. Film critics praised her performance, though their response to the film was mixed. Raja Sen thought that the film lacked a good story but added that Padukona acts within herself and eschews exaggeration. And the results are impressive, this may be her most self aware performance so far. The pairing of Padukona with her former boyfriend was anticipated and the film emerged as a major commercial success. Her next appearance was opposite Shah Rukh Khan in Rohit Chetty's action comedy film Chennai Express. She played Meena Lakini as Agasundaram, a Tamil girl on the run from her father, a local Don, which required that she adopt a Tamil accent. Critical opinion on her accent was mixed, but her performance received praise. Film critic Asim Chabra wrote, Padukona is delightful in the film beautiful, smiling, and often a lot more playful and funny than Khan. Chennai Express earned over 3.95 billion Indian rupees, 57 million US dollars, to emerge as Padukona's highest grossing release to that point. And alongside Yejawani Hidiwani it ranks among the highest grossing Indian films of all time. Padukone next played opposite Ranveer Singh in Galeon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela, an adaptation of the Shakespearean tragedy of Romeo and Juliet from director Sanjay Leela Bungsali. Her role was Leela, a Gujarati girl based on the character of Juliet. Initially titled Ram Leela, the film's title was changed after a court case was registered against Bungsali, Padukone and sing for offending the religious sentiments of the Hindu community by showcasing sex and violence under a title that referred to the life of Rama. Galeon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela released among protests across several states in India, but was generally well received by critics. Meena Ayyar of the Times of India mentioned Padukona as breathtaking, and writing for Deccan Chronicle, Halid Mohammed concluded that it's Deepika Padukona whom the film belongs to. Looking drop-dead gorgeous and going at her part with a wallop, she's the prime asset of Ram Leela. The film earned 2.02 billion Indian rupees, 29 million US dollars, worldwide. Making it Padukone's fourth consecutive success of the year. Her performances in Chennai Express and Galeon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela won her several awards. Including the Screen Award for Best Actress for both films and the Filmfare Award for Best Actress for the latter. In 2014, Padukona featured opposite Rajini Kunt in the Tamil film Kochada Iyan, a period drama that was shot using motion capture technology. She was paid 30 million Indian rupees, 430 US dollars. 000 for two days worth of work in it. In Homi Utjaniya's widely praised satire Finding Fanny. Padukone played a young widow who takes a road trip with her dysfunctional friends, played by Arjun Kapoor, Nasiruddin Shah, Dimple Kapadia, and Pankaj Kapur, in search of a woman named Fanny. The film was screened at the 19th Busan International Film Festival.
Kritikanij Kumar of the Hindu wrote that Padukone successfully takes off the fine rise of Bollywood and you can sense the freedom from baggage in her performance. Later that year, she starred opposite Shah Rukh Khan for the third time in Farrakh Khan's renewal of Happy New Year. She played a bar dancer who trains a group of underachievers for a dance competition. Sanjukta Sharma of Mint found her role to be of minimal importance that required her only to be a pretty thing to be laughed at and pitted, but the film became one of her most successful. Earning over 3.4 billion Indian rupees, 49 million US dollars, worldwide. Paiku and period films with Sanjay Leela Bhungsali, 2015, present. Following an appearance in Homi Utjaniya's online video on feminism, entitled My Choice. Padukone took on the role of a headstrong Bengali architect who cares for her hypochondriac father, played by Amitabh Bachchan, in Shujit Sarkar's comedy drama Paiku, 2015. She was drawn to the depiction of a realistic father-daughter bond, which she thought was rare in Hindi cinema. Reviews for the film were positive. Tanmayananda of Business Standard praised the film's feminist tone and wrote that Padukone proves what she is capable of when given something more to do than look pretty and be the crazy dance girl at parties. NDTV's Sayabal Chaturji opined that she holds Paiku together with a restrained star turn. With a worldwide gross of over 1.40 billion Indian rupees, 20 million US dollars, Paiku emerged as a box office hit and garnered Padukone several awards, including second Best Actress Awards at Film Fair and Screen. Later in 2015, Padukone played the part of a business person who helps Ranbir Kapoor's character overcome his conflicts in Imtiaz Ali's romantic drama Tamasha. Despite poor financial returns, Sukanya Varma of Redip.com named Padukone's performance as the best by an actress that year, writing that she is so potent in Tamasha. It's almost as if you can hear her heartbeat across the screen. In her final release of 2015, Padukone reunited with Sanjay Leela Bhungsali and Ranveer Singh in Bajirayo Mastani, a historical drama about a tragic extramarital affair. Singh was cast as the Maratha general Bajirayo I, while Priyanka Chopra and Padukone featured as his first and second wife, respectively. To play the warrior Princess Mastani, Padukone learned sword fighting, horse riding, and the martial art form of Kalaripayatu. With a revenue of over 3.5 billion Indian rupees, 51 million US dollars, Bajirayo Mastani proved to be the fourth highest grossing Bollywood film of the year. Anupma Chopda found Padukone riveting, but Subhash Keja thought that she was way too subtle and silken, and not steely enough. The film was showcased at the International Film Festival of India. At the 61st Film Fair Awards, Bajirao Mastani was named Best Film and Padukone received her second Best Actress nomination in that year. The action film Triple X, Return of Xander Cage, 2017, in which Padukone played the lead female role of Serena Unger, opposite Vin Diesel, marked her first project in Hollywood. Critical reception of the film was mixed. Tirdad Dirakshani of the Philadelphia Inquirer termed the film a repetitious heap of remarkably tedious CGI-enhanced action scenes and thought that Padukone's talent was wasted in it. Conversely, Frank Sheck of The Hollywood Reporter believed that she had successfully outclassed Diesel to practically steal the film. The film earned over 345 million US dollars worldwide, a majority of which came from the Chinese box office. Padukone received three nominations at the Teen Choice Awards and followed it with an item number in the romantic drama Rapta. In 2018, Padukone portrayed Rani Padmavati, a Rajput queen who commits Jawahar, self-immolation, to protect herself from the Muslim invader Aladdin Kilji, in the period drama Padmavit. It marked her third collaboration with Bhungsali and Singh. She was challenged by the need to convey her character's courage through silence and considered it to be the most emotionally exhausting role of her career. She read history books on the era and researched the various historical depictions of Padmavati.
Right-wing Hindu groups speculated that the film portrayed a romantic liaison between Padmavati and Kilji, they protested violently and placed a bounty to behead Padukona and Bungsali. Following a deferment in release, the film was cleared for exhibition after several modifications were made to it. Anna M. M. Vedicat of First Post criticized the film's glorification of Jawahar but credited Padukona for managing to eke something out of the stereotype-ridden writing. Ankur Pathak of HuffPost 2 took note of the film's regressive theme but thought that Padukona had played her part with restrained elegance. With an estimated budget of 2 billion Indian rupees, 29 million US dollars. Padmavat is one of the most expensive Hindi film, and with earnings of 5.45 billion Indian rupees, 79 million US dollars. It is Padukone's highest grossing release and one of Indian cinema's biggest grocers. She received another Best Actress nomination at Film Fair. Upcoming projects Padukone will star as an acid attack survivor, based on Lakshmi Agarwal, in Chhapak, a drama by Meghna Gulzar. Which will mark her first production venture under her company Ka Entertainment. She will next produce 83 a sports film about India's victory at the 1983 Cricket World Cup. Starring Ranveer Singh as Kapil Dev, in which she will also take on the role of Dev's wife. Romi. Padukona has also committed to reprise the role of Serena Unger in the fourth installment of the Triple X film series. Personal life Padukona shares a close bond with her family, and visits them regularly in her hometown of Bangalore. She lives by herself in Prabhadevi, a neighborhood in Mumbai, and admits to missing the presence of her family there. She says, I miss them, but luckily I have a life of my own, which keeps me from getting homesick. I wouldn't want them to uproot their lives from Bengaluru just to be with me. A practicing Hindu. Padukona considers religion to be an important aspect of her life and makes frequent visits to temples and other religious shrines. While filming Bakna A.E. Hasino in 2008, Padukone began a romantic relationship with co star Ranbir Kapoor. She spoke openly about the relationship and sported a tattoo of his initials on the nape of her neck. She has said that the relationship had a profound effect on her, transforming her into a more confident and social person. The Indian media speculated on an engagement and reported that this had occurred in November 2008, although Padukona had stated that she had no plans to marry within the next five years. The couple broke up a year later, she professed in an interview to feeling betrayed for a long time. In a 2010 interview, Padukona accused him of infidelity, and Kapoor later admitted to it. They reconciled their friendship while working on Yejawani Hidewani. Padukone subsequently became reticent to discuss her personal life, but in 2017, she fondly spoke of her relationship with her frequent co-star Ranveer Singh. In November 2018, the couple married in traditional Konkani and Sindhi ceremonies at Lake Como, Italy. Off-screen work in addition to acting, Padukona has written opinion columns and has been involved with women's health and fitness magazines. She has also supported charitable organizations and has performed for stage shows. In 2009, she was hired by Hindustan Times to write weekly columns for their lifestyle section. Through these columns, she interacted with her fans and passed details of her personal and professional life. That year, she participated in the World 10K Bangalore Marathon, which raised 13.1 million Indian rupees, 190,000 US dollars, in support of 81 NGOs. In 2010, Padukona adopted the Maharashtrian village of Ambajayan as part of NDTV's Greenathon campaign to provide the village with a regular supply of electricity. She visited Indian Jawans, troops, in Jammu for an Independence Day special episode of NDTV's reality show J. Jawan. Padukona took part in the opening ceremony of the third season of the Indian Premier League at the D.Y. Patil Stadium in Navi, Mumbai. Three years later, she performed alongside Shah Rukh Khan, Katrina Kaif, and Pitbull for the sixth edition of the Indian Premier League. 
In 2014, she participated in a concert tour across North America, entitled Slam. The tour, in which she performed alongside her co-stars from Happy New Year 168 Patakona has also been involved with the Olympic Gold Quest team. Established by her father Angit Sethi to support Indian athletes at the Olympic Games, along with sports personalities such as Leander Pays and Viswanathan Anand and several other actors. In 2013, she launched her own line of clothing for women, in association with the retail chain Van Heusen. Two years later, Padukone collaborated with the fashion portal Mantra to launch another line under her brand All About You. In 2019, she was appointed as the chairperson of the Mumbai Academy of the Moving Image. Through her own company, Ka Enterprises, Padukone invested in Drum Foods International, a fast-moving consumer goods company who made the yogurt brand Epigamia. Padukona has also been outspoken on issues such as feminism and has said, new feminism isn't about being aggressive, it's about reaching the top yet being soft. It's about being you feminine, strong, and full of willpower. In a 2015 interview, Padukona spoke about her personal experience of overcoming depression. And in October that year she formed a foundation to create awareness on mental health in India, named the Live Love Laugh Foundation. The following year, she launched a campaign named More Than Just Sad to assist general physicians in their treatment of patients suffering from depression or anxiety. Also in 2016, the foundation teamed with Facebook and the Azra organization to launch multilingual tools and educational resources in Facebook's networking site to support people with suicidal Tendencies. Padukone became the brand ambassador for the NGO Indian Psychiatric Society and on her foundation's first anniversary. The two organizations collaborated to launch the video and poster campaign hashtag Dabarapucho dedicated to victims and survivors of depression. In the media the journalist Veer Sungavi, in 2013, described Padukone as strong, someone who makes up her own mind and has motivation within herself. She is particularly known in the media as a professional, disciplined performer, whose work takes precedence over everything else. A reviewer for Rediff.com described her personality as simple, grounded, and accessible, and wrote, she takes criticism in her stride, acknowledges her limitations and strives to work hard at getting better. She handles praise with equal composure. Ian Mukherjee, the director of Yejawani Hidewani, considers her to be a woman who will flirt with you but you will love to take her home to meet your mom as well. 70 Padukona has maintained a Twitter account since 2010, and launched an official Facebook page in 2013. She is the most followed Asian woman on Twitter. Padukona is considered among the most popular and high-profile celebrities in India. Analyzing her career, Reuters published that after making a successful debut with OM Shanti OM, she featured in a series of films for which critics labeled her as wooden and mocked her accent. The Indian Express added, Not too long ago after a few unwise script calls and the public blow-up of her high-profile relationship with Ranbir Kapoor, Deepika was written off. Credit to her much-touted professionalism, dedication, discipline, and perseverance that she bounced back. 187 Following the success of Cocktail, Yejawani Hidewani, and Chennai Express. Several media publications began crediting her as the most successful contemporary actress in India. In 2017, India Today featured her among the nation's 50 most powerful people. The global edition of Forbes ranked her as the 10th highest paid actress in the world in 2016 and in 2018. The magazine ranked her as the highest earning woman celebrity in India. From 2014 to 2016 and in 2018, she was the highest ranked woman on the Indian edition of Forbes Celebrity 100, a list based on the income and popularity of celebrities. 
peaking at the fourth position in 2018 with an estimated annual earning of over 1.12 billion Indian rupees, 16 million US dollars, dot also in 2018. Time magazine named Padukone one of the 100 most influential people in the world, Variety featured her in their listing of the 50 most impactful women in the world. And the market research firm YouGov named her the world's 13th most admired woman. Padukone is considered a sex symbol and style icon in India, the media cites her figure, height 1.74 m, 5 feet 8 1 2 in, smile and eyes as her distinctive physical features. The actress ranks high on various listings of the most attractive Indian celebrities. In 2008, she topped Indian Maxim's Hot 100 list, and in 2012, she was named India's most beautiful woman by the Indian edition of People magazine. 202 Padukona has frequently featured in the Times of India's listing of the most desirable woman. Topping the list in 2012 and 2013. In 2010 and 2014, she was named the world's sexiest woman by the Indian edition of FHM. And she was selected by the UK magazine Eastern Eye as the sexiest Asian woman in 2016 and 2018. Taking note of her dress sense, Film Fair credited her as one of the few actresses who experiments with colors, cuts, and silhouettes. In the fitness book The Four Week Countdown Diet. The actress was cited by Namita Jain as the ultimate role model for a healthy, fit, and active lifestyle. Padukone is an active celebrity endorser for several brands and products, including Tizot, Maybelline, Coca-Cola, and L'Oreal Paris, among others. In 2014, Business Standard reported that Padukona earned 50 million Indian rupees, 720,000 US dollars, to 60 million Indian rupees, 870 US dollars. 000, per endorsement deal and Tam at EX named Padukona the most visible face on television in India that year. In 2016, Duff and Phelps estimated her brand value to be 86 million US dollars, the third highest of Indian celebrities. Accolades main article, list of awards and nominations received by Deepika Padukone. Padukone has been the recipient of three Filmfare Awards, Best Female Debut for OM Shanti OM, 2007, and two Best Actress Awards for Galeon Ki Ras Leela Ram Leela, 2013, and Paiku. 2015.